Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul with RP1 series and Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. In this episode, I think we're going to try another J2 test, but uh, maybe we should get the J2 upgrade to the actual J2. Uh, it's a little bit complicated because uh, the, the initial configuration is actually the throttle down version. The J2 had a feature where it could have a different fuel mixture, fuel oxidizer ratio, and that was its method for throttling down. And for some reason, they treat that throttle down version as a different configuration of the J2, uh, even though even this J2 was able to throttle down in that way and did so on the upper stage of the Saturn V, for instance. Uh, so I don't know why they have that peculiar throttle uh, throttling down to 200,000 uh, pound thrust as a separate configuration, but uh, as far as I know, it's the same engine. There are variants of the J2, J2S, J2T, J2X, uh, but the 200,000 pound version is just actually a different uh, fuel oxidizer mixture, which it could do on the fly, I think. So anyway, but hopefully this version is more reliable. It would be quite interesting if it wasn't reliable because its reliability was essential to the Apollo missions. So, and we have enough science, so I think I'm just going to unlock this to save ourselves some trouble. But that'll still take uh, 38 days, and of course any science that we get, any data that we get from the engine test will still carry over. So it might be a complete failure, um, but since we're building it, we might as well just run with it. Uh, there is a Hammond BP. I don't feel like we need to worry too much about the Hammond boilerplate anymore. I think we should just proceed. Let's take a look at it. So ultimately it is down to, we're on the wrong launch pad, that's why it's showing orange down there, but uh, it is down to the J2 again. And again, we're gonna try and unlock this technology here, which will have a higher rated burn time and hopefully be more reliable. I think we'll hold off on launching this until we get that upgrade. So yeah, uh, maybe we'll just time warp, wait till the upgrade, and then upgrade both the J2 test and this, and then do the J2 test, and then launch this, and hopefully that will make it all more reliable. I mean, I hate waiting because we are getting close to things after all, but yeah, that probably is the most prudent thing to do. Okay, well, before we get the upgrade, we need to take care of this maneuver with the Gotron and this one with the Piper 1 arriving at Mars, finally. So let's get to it. Okay, this probe is also attempting a Mars encounter. And it needs to make a pretty hefty burn in order to do that. Got a heat shield, pretty big balloon tank and thrusters on this side. So we had better be controlling from this docking port. Uh, hello? Yep. We're oblique to the sun right now, so the power is off, but uh, while, while we're time warping, it's recharging anyway. Technically, we already did the Mars Atmospheric Probe contract. I don't know, it has a dot. I th oh, I think this was supposed to be some sort of fuel depot for Mars. But probably a stage failed. And that's why. I mean, otherwise, why the docking port, right? Yeah, I think that's what happened. Stage failed. So we'll try an aero capture with it and have it support communications around Mars because it's got the commutrons. Okay, here comes our orbit. Not that this current inclination is the best for helping out future missions. All right, well, we'll have to fine tune that periapsis once we get there. Let's get the SOI change. And we'll pay attention to this when it arrives. Power should be excellent. Yes, it is, while we're time warping. And let us turn, uh, well, basically to that Piper 1, which is actually arriving in Mars SOI. Okay, so this Piper 1 has just entered Mars SOI, and it has just enough fuel to make orbit, it looks like. 
I think that's the goal. It's a very loose orbit, you can see, but it would be in orbit. But are we going to have communication once we get there? Well, I just need to focus in on Mars. And let's verify that that communication line really is where it's supposed to be going. Okay. Then uh, a, a little bit past periapsis is where we'll gain communication right around here-ish, but we'll basically be blocked starting around here. Uh, so is this a time when we should use flight computer to try and do uh, a burden at the node? Hmm, I don't know. It's been a long time since I tried flight computer doing a burn at the node, and we don't have a whole lot of spare delta V. But because we don't have a lot of spare delta V, we also can't uh, start burning too early, right? Or burn late. Of course, I could use smart ASS to just do it. Well, I don't know if I can throttle up or not. That's a question. But as you can see, we, we know that we're going to have a communication blackout soon. We need to do a burn. Let's see. It's a six minute uh, burn time, so probably we need to start three minutes ahead of that or in 23 minutes. And let's say I hold maneuver prograde. It's not really what I wanted you to do, actually. Okay, um, stop. Uh, how do I stop it from using too much RCS while we're doing this? Probably just time warp, I suppose. This doesn't have a reaction wheel on it, does it? That would have been handy, but expensive. Okay, so let's say when I execute, I want in 15 minutes, which is 900 seconds. Okay, so 15 minute delay. And I'm going to wait a little bit. Okay, right around there-ish, I want it to throttle up, burn. Uh, oh, I need to have a meter per second thing. What if I say 2,144 meters per second? Will it understand? Seems like it. Okay, so in theory, I'll do that, maybe. But I'll have to turn on RCS before I lose communication, and we'll see whether it does it properly or not. It's like uh, seven minutes, no, like 15 minutes of panic, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> um, oh, toggle, no. Oh, okay, all right. Um, let's go to zero. Now toggle RCS. Unless there's going to be... Nope, we lost communication. I was going like... Unless one of the other satellites around would help with communication, that would be handy. But nope. Nope, nope, nope. Technically, without connection, we wouldn't even know what happened until after it uh, came around, of course. Fortunately, you know, if it overburns, that's not a problem. Just means we get into a slightly tighter orbit than our insanely loose orbit right now. Okay, it is burning. Okay, so far so good, but are we gonna capture? Uh, the burn was conducted on time. And will it shut down properly instead of flipping around all over the place? Okay. I really wanna shut off RCS, but I can't, can I? Nope, I can't. Gosh darn it. Stop using the RCS. I'll just time warp. I'll just time warp. That's my only hope. <laughs> uh, the, 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 the use of RCS is one of the reasons why I don't like flight computer. Okay, nothing new there. Alright, retro. Alright, that's all of our fuel.
we can't even reorient but this thing is recharging just fine and time warp will be recharging even better does it read an orbit barely it says we're in orbit this is an orbiter can't say it can do very much since it doesn't have the communitrons to help out but who knows at least it got done okay so here it is and now we can proceed with the J2 stuff and perhaps launching uh, this, st this space station that will help us fulfill the first space station contract we have here. So all that to come. I think it's got to be a bunch of launches from here on out. Okay, so this is another J2 test, but this time it should be a full service J2. And we'll see how it goes. Throttle up, SAS is on, and we should probably bring down those launch clamps. All right, so uh, four H1s, ignition, and launch. So it's a dawn launch. We should uh, see the sun rise at some point. Okay, ignition of the J2. It failed! Like one of the most reliable engines in the world. Okay. I mean, we got a lot of data units now. It is, it is the one that, the version that was on Saturn V and everything. Really. Okay, well, well, this is about to expend anyway. It's so weird. Uh, well, very stable. Yeah, I mean, you can't say the fuel was unsettled with the boosters firing. I don't know. This doesn't bode well for everything. Um, we do have the Hammond BP with another one of these uh, J2s. But they sure seem to fail a lot, don't they? A lot. I mean, a lot, a lot. Well, whatever. Uh, next, let's just not do a J2 thing. Uh, we have the Station Alpha under construction. We'll roll that out first, launch it, and so that we can get on with uh, that contract, the first space station contract. And then, if all goes well there, uh, we will proceed with the uh, Hammond boiler plate with another one of these J2s. That's much more expensive, of course. If uh, all does not go well with the Station Alpha, we will launch the backup Station Alpha, and I'll move that up, just in case. But, well, I don't know. That's going to take a while, huh? But that's only because it's in the second build slot. Speaking of which, well, we can't do that right now. All right, all right. Let me just abandon this mission. Well, we have one upgrade point available. I'll toss that in there. Heck, let's get to at least uh, half the build rate of the top one. Okay. Um, let me take a look at how much I can spend given our commitments. So we've got 4.7 million committed there. 3 million, 3.1 million committed there, 7.8 altogether. Call it 8 million committed. We can buy some more build points. I don't have a rocket that needs a larger launch pad right now, but in a sort of we need to beat Apollo 11 sort of emergency, we might want to go there. And with the J2 acting the way it is, I'm tempted to just dump test flight if it keeps messing with the J2. That's just not right. That's not right. But anyway, we'll see. Okay, so Station Alpha. Well, the rollout time for Station Alpha is a whopping 5 days and 17 hours, so you know it's expensive. And so let's focus on this Piper 1A coming into Mars. Okay, well, we are in Mars SOI with the Piper 1A. It's looking good. The Mars periapsis is a bit high, but we've got this stage tagging along, so we might as well use it to help uh, bring us in a little bit more. And it ignited. It's set such a good example for the J2, really. <laughs> this AJ-10. 
Okay. After all this time on this long trip, it was it was good. Okay, that's probably close enough. Let's jettison this stage. All right. Well, it's just the same sort of thing. And I didn't action group these. I'm pretty sure we've done all of this stuff. It's been a long time since I tossed action groups extended into something. I believe that lets you change action groups on the fly. Oh, we got a new infrared radiometer reading. That's something that I might want. Oh, periapsis is negative because of separation. Let's get everything activated. And use the RCS to push you away. But since the other probe managed to do a fine job getting into orbit, I suppose we can do that here. But maybe we should aim for a polar orbit. We've got a lot of delta V. Well, I mean, compared to the last one we do. Okay, that looks nice. Polarish orbit. Potential communications once we get to periapsis. And maybe we can do some good science. Let's find out. Mars ahead. Yes, we will remain connected. So good times. But I think we should start burning now because it's a long burn. Retrograde, please. Passing over the poles, maybe I can get some science. No, it says Midland still. Sure seems... Polish to me with the Polish uh, with the compass changing Midlands this way too many Midlands just double checking that we didn't miss a Midland but I pretty yeah we didn't okay well I'll just wait till the current biome changes to something else Oh, we've passed periapsis enough that I have to pitch down a bit to compensate, but we are in orbit. We have captured definitively and shut down. Two days. Well, let's hasten that a little bit. A one day orbit is fine. Okay, well, let's see if we can grab some extra... Oh, it's, we're back to Midlands. We were over Olympus Mons, which isn't any better, really. We've done that before, too. The problem with Mars it, is it all seems to be Midlands and Olympus Mons. Okay, well, I'm, I'm sure we've done Lowlands, too, but... Well, except for the infrared radiometer. North Ice Cap. Well, thank goodness. All right, well, that's going to be new. High over. But I don't know if we're even going to be able to get low over. We will permanently be high over the North Ice Cap. Highlands. Well, I haven't seen that in a while. Yep, that's new. Okay, well, if there was a South Pole, we would be over it. We passed uh, the lowest point we actually go in latitude, so... Okay, I don't think we're gonna get any more for now. I mean, possibly we'll hit something, but I'm not gonna wait around. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is launch Station Alpha. At least attempt to. Okay, here we are with Station Alpha. I've more or less lined up with the moon. And mercifully, this doesn't have a J2. I can't believe I'm saying that. Um, but instead it's got a bunch of proton engines, which are apparently better, maybe? Um, I don't know. Seems fishy to me. But here we are. Throttle up. SAS is on. And ignition. Oh, well, we have a bit of a loss of performance there. We can still go. Heck, rolling it back is totally not worth it, so, uh, yeah, we can still go all right. We'll see. 
it's not good because the uh, specific impulse has a problem. But I can shut it down pretty soon. I need to shut down the opposite side too. Let's see. Well, this is a risk, but I've got to shut this one down. And we're just on three engines. It can barely hold on to it, it looks like. Oh, 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 no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, 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 uh, all right, fine, uh, this side, oh, shoot, uh, shut that down. I don't think it was in time. Uh, well, again, losing the rocket is cheaper than rolling it back and rolling it out again, so it's like, you know, maybe, I mean, what can we do, really? Okay, we're, we're just going to have engine failures today. Mm, maybe I should have gone full proton with it. See, that's the problem. I only have four of the proton engines. If we had six, there wouldn't be as much of an issue. But cutting costs, you see, we can't have that. All right. Um, well, we have a backup station alpha, but it's going to take a little while. I think we're going to roll out this Hammond BP. Well, this is weird. I was looking at contracts because we got a series window coming up. I wondered if I could get a series flyby contract. There is one there, but this says ferry three tourists to station alpha. Um, I don't think that's possible. I note that completion is only two funds. I, I don't get this contract at all. <laughs> I mean, station alpha is of course on its way down and will be destroyed soon. Um, let me see how long that series window is available for. Ooh, we've got scatter issues. But let's see, Earth to series. Might be another way to give the J2 more work. I mean, it's not like we've got an engine that works properly anyway right now, so I guess we should. Can we get something done in time? Well, let me check that out. Okay, I've picked up the series contract and we'll uh, try for it. But we are in the midst of rolling out the Hammond BP. Actually, that shouldn't, I mean, technically the Piper C's for series uh, should be rolling out to the 350 ton pad. So we don't even have to wait for this pad to get uh, cleared up for them to launch. But if we want to make that window, we're going to need to speed them up just a bit. Okay, well, as much as we can. It's worth it. Okay, so that's fine. And, well, we'll still, since this is already rolling out and rolling it back and rolling out again would be very expensive, we are just going to proceed with it and act like it's just another J2 test at this point, which functionally it is. The Piper C's are actually launching on the J2 test rocket, but we've got substantial extra delta V just in case and that comes in the form of a transfer stage with an RD-58 which you know may or may not work but uh, the RD-58 has like 6,000 meters per second to work with or more and then the probe itself has 3,000 so we could still make it if the J2 at least starts but you know maybe not completes it bur completes its burn Anyway, here we go. Here's the Hammond BP, and I believe this one's configured to land on the moon. And so we're going to do a landing test. Basically, the mission architecture is there's a return craft that gets into orbit around the moon, and then there's a lander craft that lands on the moon and tries to get back to the return craft again. And so there's those two pieces, and they dock. It's a lunar orbit rendezvous, but two launches. This is a pretty common architecture as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I've used it many times, so we'll see if it works this time. But we really, really, really need the J2 to work. If the J2 doesn't work, we need to upgrade the launch pad. Okay, here we go. Throttle up. SAS is on. Six RD-253s this time. Ignition.
face to oscillate, I have to say. As if the payload where the core is, is rocking back and forth instead of properly Kerbal Joint reinforced or something. Okay, getting close to the end of this burn. This reads 2,149 data units on the J2. Mean time before failure, more than four hours. We're about to find out what happens. And ignition. Ignition. Don't mess with me. Okay, we have an ignition on the J2. Okay, fairing separation. Oh, I forgot this one was Iggy. But it's off. Right here we have an RD-58. And then the rest of the business, which is mostly Gemini Lander engine, I think? No, uh, the two kilonewton thrusters. Need to replace that with the Gemini Lander engine. Okay, it actually made the burn, and we are about to make orbit. We'll see if we get the extra 1,000 meters per second out of it this time. On the start to our transfer. Okay, 202 by 175. Now we're not going to follow this to the moon, necessarily. We want to do the series missions, I think. Let me see. Uh, maybe we'll reach the moon in that time, actually. Yep, yeah, maybe we can complete this before working on the series missions. Okay, throttling up. It actually lit. <laughs> well, maybe the J2 is not so bad after all. Getting some more data units. Boy, do we need more data units. Okay. And ignition. Okay, the RD-58 has ignited. So again, I've got the MLI layers on these tanks down here, except I guess I didn't put the fuel prioritization right on all of them. The idea was that this tank should drain first, it doesn't have MLI, and then these get drained. But for some reason, this one and this one have the wrong fuel. Nope. This one just doesn't have the right fuel priority. Well, I can actually change that right now. Uh, that... Why was that one drained at all? I don't know. I guess they were on three-way symmetry. Okay, anyway, that should be fine. We are a little bit late on the burn, but the moon is forgiving on this particular... in this particular respect. Okay, it's been a good burn so far, but we need this to make one more such burn. Oop, oop, too far. Uh, one more such burn. And let's back off from that. Now, technically on this lander, we shouldn't be carrying the ablator at all. And there are other things we could trim out to make it a little bit more efficient. I mean, first of all, we have to be able to get back to orbit with it, so right now that's not working. And the reason why it's not working is we really need the J2 to do the transfer, not the RD-58. What's supposed to happen is the J2 is supposed to do the transfer, and then the RD-58 stage uh, captures and begins descent, and then this stage actually handles ascent. Though, uh, hopefully shaped a little bit differently. Everything needs to be shaped a little bit differently. But first we need to get the engines working properly, so... Okay, it says very stable. Ignition? Oh, of course. Of course that's not gonna work. Alright. Um... Yep, yep. Well, there's another spare. And it could be used as... well, no, it can't be used as a recovery pod. It's just another spare now. 
Oh, uh, yeah, well, that'll be fine. Okay, well, I guess that's all I'm gonna do with this. We'll just leave it be. It is in orbit around the moon. It does not have enough to land. And I think I should do a lot of redesigning. But for now, let's see if we can get a probe to series. We've built two, and hopefully one of them will work. Okay, well, we had to wait a day, so we are a little bit late on the window. Throttle up, SAS is on. Let's see if it works. Ignition. And launch. So again, same rocket as the J-2 test uh, for H-1 engines. We'll ignite the J-2 in flight, hopefully. Time before failure is up to five hours now. Uh, that should be fine. Ignition. Okay, it has ignited. Okay, booster separation. And off they go. Alright, we are on our way. Finally, we've got the weird double Atlas tank going. I don't expect the J2 to finish our orbit. Uh, nope, that's reading like it can right now though. So maybe I do expect it. If that's true. I was expecting to finish with the RD-58 and then reignite the RD-58 for the transfer burn, but maybe not. Well, I guess we never really got to the point where I assessed the payload capacity of this rocket since the J-2 never lit before, so it turns out it can carry more payload than I thought it could. Well, we are about to make orbit here. Now, I don't know if the RCS up here is powerful enough to sell the fuel down for the J-2 or not, but I guess we might as well try. So we'll get those ready. And let's plot. I mean, any more data that we can get on the J2 is a good thing. If this seems to be headed in the right direction, then actually going out to Ceres will reserve the other Piper C for a different asteroid like Vesta. ASAP 5,200, well, 5,182 it says right here. We have to wait a bit though. We should have communications when we need to do the burn. The burn location is like right over Mexico, close enough to White Sands, Brownsville and all that business. So yeah, I don't think we're going to have that much of a problem. Well, while the J2 is still reading stable, let's try and ignite it. Okay, it has ignited. RD-58 time. Okay, it too has ignited. Since this probe is basically the same as the other Pipers, I don't... I'm not too worried about it except maybe communication range since Ceres is further out than Mars. That's the only problem. Right now we're carrying quite a lot of Delta V. I don't think it's enough to actually make orbit around Ceres. We'll see. That's a lot of energy we would need to burn off. Oh, RD-50. Gosh darn it. I was just about to say we are go for transfer with the probe's own fuel, but we're not actually. Okay, well... I guess part of my problem is that this was actually a 11D33 instead of the actual RD58. Though we do have like 10,000 units on it, data units, but yeah, I should have got uh, I should have made sure that we had the proper RD58 configuration on this. Well, let me go back to the space center and fix that on the backup. I don't think I'm going to waste any more time with this one. Okay, I've uh, made the fix to the next Piper C, the backup, but I think I should wait until the next episode to launch it because this has been basically an episode of lots of failures. I think we've got 
a more reliable J2 now. I, we've had a couple of successes in a row. I think we've got some good data on it. Hopefully it's going to work out for us now. But next time we will try one more launch to series. We are going to try again to launch the space station and hopefully that will work so that we can launch the crew to it using the Valiant D. Those are the three things that we've got queued up there. I am going to redesign our moon mission and start building the real thing. And so we're going to have to, we'll put, we'll put Kerbals in and we're going to have to hope for the best there. So yeah, <laughs> what can I say? Uh, I'll, I'll leave it there. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.